Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to the application modernization webinar, uh, the first step towards digital transformation. Thanks for attending. And as I see some of my previous uh, and past work colleagues have also joined, welcome and thank you. But first, let me introduce you to some of my colleagues who have joined to present with me. Bridge Babasar and Nidhi Telly, with many years of experience uh, with Synoptic leading teams and application development projects. And right now, I think you'll be getting some poll questions as we uh, begin this web webinar. But on our agenda for today, we plan on covering why a legacy ecosystem can't survive the post-COVID-19 world, uh, we'll talk about our application modernization approach and framework, and then we'll talk about best practices for application modernization, and we'll talk about some of the case studies where we've done application modernization work. Hello all, this is Bridge here. So as Debbie mentioned, let us begin by understanding as why uh, modernizing legacy application from being a long-term goal for enterprises has become an immediate need for enterprises and businesses. As we have all witnessed, uh, COVID-19 pandemic has a huge impact on the mankind. The way we conduct our schools, the way we even do our business, jobs, the way we do our banking, even shopping, etc. Almost all the aspects of our day-to-day -day life have undergone a sea change. Let us talk about some of the major growing trends that we have seen uh, with COVID-19 and the reasons why a legacy ecosystem won't survive the post-COVID-19 world. Uh, first in the list is increased digitization with various restrictions and guidelines set to protect ourselves from the pandemic. We have moved to a world of increased digitization as we all know. We are doing everything from the comfort of our homes with minimum social contact and working through internet most of the times. This has led to sudden surge of online business transactions and has made the enterprises realize that their applications have become the front face or probably the backbone of their businesses. It has made the businesses understand that they need to be flexible enough and adapt quickly to varying circumstances. Uh, a big part of this adap adaptability is to ensure that the mission critical applications that the businesses uh, depend on uh, and support the business are scalable enough uh, to meet the growing demand and highly available to meet increased transactions. Moving on to the next point uh, about change in industry structure that we are seeing. Businesses are finding all possible ways to continue doing business despite the restrictions. Example, working from home, uh, becoming you know, becoming the new norm in business, the increase in online education, etc. The new normal has teached an important lesson that businesses need to maintain a low operating cost and upgrade to cost-effective software systems with minimal external dependencies. Point number three is on increased integration needs that we are seeing with increased competition to cap capture growing online business and sustain their market position, enterprises realize that they need to open to integrate with various third-party systems, either through APIs or, the, or through doing some data exchange or doing some data transfer, et cetera, to provide seamless integration to their customers or end users with all required information available at one single place. But this, becomes a challenge when you are stuck with legacy applications that don't support the required integrations. Point number four is about improved customer experience. Uh, we have realized that providing a good user experience through the online application is a key to keep the customer base growing and have a longer association. There is also a growing demand to have applications either to various compliances and meet quality standards like the ADA compliance, accessibility standards, security best practices, etc. This requires businesses to decide whether they want to invest more on their already uh, old applications that need revamping and doesn't conform to the best practices and standards, 
or take a more long term decision to modernize to a more scalable solution all right so let's talk about the cloud adoption framework you can't talk about really digital transformation or application modernization without starting with the cloud adoption framework. Each organization will have, or hopefully will have their own plan for going to the cloud or not and or strategy. So some of the steps that you have to go through when you're deciding, when you're moving your um, applications or your organization to the cloud is you have to go through a strategy and assessment phase, which will talk, you'll analyze the business value uh, determine the business case and do some initial discovery. Then you'll start the planning phase, which is requirements gathering, um, understanding the skills, what's your migration plan, what's your operating model, and answer all those sorts of questions during the planning phase. Then you'll actually perform the migration and transform and then test, and then continue to optimize and manage your, um, your cloud. So with this, we then have our own application modernization framework, which goes along with the cloud adoption framework. So first, in application modernization, when you're looking at your applications, you need to decide, you know, understand your application and do a little discovery to understand what the migration value is and what the business case it is for that discovery phase. And so you have to strategize and prioritize your actions to basically maximize your results by the cloud capabilities. The next phase is planning and preparation. So once you have um, decided to move your applications or some of your applications to the cloud and determine your strategy, you then now have to make some decisions on what uh, basically uh, framework are you gonna actually move? So you might, how are you gonna actually modernize those application and transform the architecture and the infrastructure while you transition to that new technology? So you have to make some decisions between the five R's, which I'm gonna talk about now. So the five R's of application modernization come from you know, Gartner um, back in 2011 on their application migration strategies. So let's talk about the first uh, strategy, which is rehost or lift and ship, lift and ship, which is a very common approach when migrating your apps to the cloud. If, the, if your organization is looking up to speed up their migration projects, you know, rehosting will give immediate benefits with, um, which would allow you to save up 30% of operational costs without optimizing the apps for the cloud. So when should you use the rehost option? When you're more concerned about a cost and time to migrate, that would be uh, an acceptable approach. Or if you're looking to reduce your on-prem infrastructure costs immediately, or if you're currently incurring too much cost in maintaining your physical infrastructures. So it's a very affordable option to move from CapEx to OpEx, and again, cost savings, and immediate benefits of cloud computing. Um, some apps, some of the cons, or some of the reasons that you may not be able to select re-host re or lift and ship is that some apps are too complex to actually move for lift and ship, and it might require some special tools. And some applications might not be scalable for the cloud. The second one is refactoring or re-architecting. This is basically thinking about your existing application and leveraging cloud native services and features from a code or architecture perspective. It could be the most expensive often, but it would be the best, it would give you the best possible benefits of a cloud platform and you probably need a strong business case to select this option. Um, so four reasons maybe why you wanna re-architect your application might be your application is cloud compatible, but not cloud native. You might want to improve the application scale and agility and allow it to make it easier to adopt new cloud technologies. And then if you use a mix of different technology stacks right now, this will allow you to consolidate it all into one. Um, so, you need to take a look at the advantages and the limitations when, when looking at this refactoring approach. Um, sometimes it's hard to find the talent to support the legacy application and costly, which might be a reason to refactor as well. And then one of the benefits that you get is that there's no limitations on what you can do with this application once you have re-architected and refactored it. 
So when you're boosting your agility, you'll also be able to improve your business continu con continuity by you know, redoing the architecture. Um, but again, as I said before, it is the most expensive option in the short, medium term, um, but allows you to take full advantage of the cloud capabilities. Um, it, it also gives you the most efficient cloud model because your application would be cloud native and will allow you to exploit continuous cloud innovation, innovation benefits. And then uh, you will be able to respond to your business events in the future more quickly. Some of the, the cons were um, also refactoring is not really for beginners. It does require a high level of skills and automation and will take a lot of time, which is resource intensive and maybe more complicated. And you also wanna make sure that you don't get it wrong. The third uh, R is revise or replatform. So this is where you either move some of the benefits or get some of the benefits by moving some of the components of your application to the cloud. Um, so its pros and cons are it's some sort of middle ground between the two strategies of refactor and rehost. There's some common modifications that are typically performed during replatforming. Platforming. You change the way a program may interact with the database to benefit from the automation or some sort of elastic database infrastructure. It also enables better scaling and leveraging reserved resources in the cloud environment with minimal code changes. So these advantages are cost efficient. Uh, it's very cost effective with the software licenses and the infrastructure. It's less operational overhead with fully managed solution. You can start small and scale as needed, lets you move some of the workloads to the cloud and experiment with the cloud environment, learn some lessons, and then move on to um, a bigger effort. Some disadvantages of replatform replatforming is that the work scope can grow. You can have scope creep. Um, it may cost more than lift and shift, and it could it, it could create a complex app. If your complex app has a lot is is complex, then it will cause a lot of testing, and it could require some code changes. And you may uh, need to do some automation. So you need to invest in some basic automation. The next option is rebuild. As the name suggests, rebuild means to discard that legacy application and developing using cloud services and features. Rebuild is platform as a service based solution and requires good familiarity with existing application and business processes as well as the cloud. The major challenge would be to work with those uh, users who are forced to use a new application who could make or break things. So, the pros of moving to this or selecting the rebuild option is that you do get the benefits of cloud. Obviously, you get to modernize the application and you will get to update, update the skill sets of the team. But again, as I mentioned, it requires familiarity of the legacy application and then the users do have to move to the new uh, application and it may change the um, SLAs that are in place for that application. Then the final strategy that you may choose during the the planning phase of your application modernization is replace or basically repur repurchase. Basically, this is where you analyze your application to determine if there's a commercial application out there that may uh, suit your needs for the requirements. Uh, this would allow you to have less administrative overhead. Um, it would have mobile, better features, flexibility and support. It's a good value, cost effective and best of breed. However, the cons are that there's limitations on the customization when you buy a third party piece of software, and it might cause you to change the business process to match the application that you're purchasing. In addition, it might, allow, it might do um, limited data access, and then this application will not be branded by your organization as it's branded by the third party organization. So then if we go back to the application modernization framework, so now that we've covered the different choices that you have in planning and preparation for your um, moving your application uh, and modernizing it, you then have to migrate it, code and test it, verify it and perform all the testing and then manage and optimize it as you move forward 
uh, with this new application. So now you know, uh, let us discuss, you know, some best practices for modernizing any legacy application. Futuristic vision is one of the primary things that should be kept in mind while defining any modernization strategy. It is very easy to get trapped in shortcuts and the outer look of the new application. But what is most important is its architecture and scalability so that it becomes ready for the increased user load in future. Second comes in is the end user experience, their usage pattern requirements and the current pain areas. These should be one of the most important deciding factors while finalizing the new design for the application. As they say, you know, a happy user or a happy customer will always be more productive and finally generate more revenue for the business. Third most, most important thing that we like to discuss today is, uh, you know, uh, things that need to be kept in mind for uh, any modernization project is defining the business objectives, priorities, and the requirements right at the beginning. This helps the team to stay focused and not get sidetracked from the primary vision or goal. While modernizing any legacy application, it is also very important to break down the modernization project function by function or feature by feature. Doing everything at one go might be quite overwhelming most of the times, and there are increased chances of failure in that approach. Fifth best practice that we like to discuss is having a data migration checklist in place. Legacy applications, you know, generally tend to have a lot of data which needs to be ported in the new application. Not having a data migration checklist might result in a lot of additional effort later on, and there uh, it would also increase uh, chances of failure. So at least a strategy needs to be prepared for data migration in the design phase itself. After that comes in the performance of the application and its overall user experience. As we discussed before, a productive and a happy user always generates more revenue from the system directly or indirectly. So this always needs to be one of the top priorities or the primary goals of for the modern applications. Last but not the least, it is very important to train the end users for the new application. They need to get accustomed and comfortable with the modern application to have a seamless switching experience from the legacy application, which they would, you know, have been using it for years. So uh, having understood the modernization framework approach that can be taken and the various options that can be considered for modernization, let us talk about some success stories where application modernization has helped businesses become more agile to handle the ever-changing business scenarios and build some highly scalable solutions with best user experience. This particular case study uh, right now on your screen is about a leading logistics firm who transform their business to become one-stop solution for various business processes related to logistics and with increased performance. They were actually uh, using a third-party software to meet their business needs, but soon realized that you know, off-the-shelf product was neither giving them the flexibility to customize it to their needs, nor was it performing to their expectations with some data load in place. They then decided to upgrade it to a custom solution for doing all their business flows and integrations and were quite successful in building a highly scalable solution using latest technology stack and customizable to their liking. The major features of the system include uh, shipment management, carrier and capacity management, freight tracking, accounting, etc. Uh, they also implemented DevOps uh, in their implementation. 
so that they can keep building the new system in incremental fashion in parallel to the existing one, uh, leading to a cost efficient solution. These efforts are reaped in great dividends and satisfaction for the customer. The performance issues that were quite visible uh, with the off the shelf product were gone and the improved UI UX design with custom solution not only helped them, helped them accommodate large amount of data in their solution in a compact fashion, but also improved the overall user experience. These are some of the screens of the uh, custom solution that was built. The second case study, you know, that we'd like to discuss today is for a construction company which wanted to modernize all their applications in terms of both the technology as well as their infrastructure. Their primary goals were to, uh, you know, first of all, consolidate data which was scattered across different systems that they had implemented into a centralized database, which would then later on be used for generating reports and streamlining the process of managing timesheets and things like that. And the second goal was to have a modern user experience. As a solution, uh, what we had done was, first of all, convert their desktop-based legacy applications, which were using Excel and Excess, into .NET Core and Angular by leveraging you know, cloud-native Azure app services, Azure SQL database, and different, I um, mean, some other Azure PaaS services also. We migrated the database from Access to SQL Server rehosted the current application from on-prem to Azure. The, the major goals that we achieved in uh, the modern application was, as I mentioned uh, previously, that we, uh, first of all, convert the desktop application into a web application so that it could be accessible from multiple locations as well as multiple devices also. Improved user experience, application performance, scalability, and uh, resilience also. Like uh, we had, you know, got in place a backup DR strategy as well for them. The infrastructure cost was also optimized uh, for this company uh, using the different Azure services. So this is a story about an organization that does organic waste recycling um, in the US. They are also um, our government re regulated, but they take uh, waste material and recycle it from you know, waters and solids. So this organization had a legacy application that was built um, over 20 years ago on Visual Basic 6 and uh, had about five modules that supported their business user workflow. They had tried to build it in a low code, no code solution and were not successful. At the point in time they came to us, they looked at uh, what could they do next. So we built a .NET application and we basically used the rebuild um, option of the five R's that we talked about where we tossed out the legacy application and rebuilt it in new technology. The reason that drove them uh, to do this was because they were being sold to another company. And in order to increase the value of their company, they needed to increase or show the modern technology of this application that drove their business, which was key. It covered their end-to-end -end business flow um, and it was currently the current the BB6 application, the legacy application, had some challenges in what they were able to do in extending the features, uh, adding new features. Uh, the user interface was not modern, and so they had a lot of challenges with it um, and were kind of stuck with the, uh, the, the functions that were uh, part of the legacy application. 
So we so Synaptic moved it to the latest .NET framework and converted it um, from a web-based application to allow multiple client locations and devices, upgraded to the cloud native architecture by leveraging the Azure app services as well as the Azure SQL database. Uh, the Azure Active Directory was used for authentication and authorization, and it was also made mobile compatible to allow it to be accessed from various devices for the business users. And as I mentioned, we used the SQL on the Azure VM so that it, um, the existing database could be used, utilized for the application. What the challenge was for this uh, during this time was the business users uh, needed to be actively involved in the process. Just as I mentioned in the rebuild option, uh, in order when you toss out a legacy application, the uh, developers uh, need to really understand the application and how it works and the business processes. So the business users were heavily involved in helping the team uh, write the user stories, determine those requirements, and then move it to the, uh, to the new uh, code and the new technology. And now the application is uh, better in terms of security, flexibility, scalability. They can add new features as they need to. Um, they can get the reports that they need to in the data. It allows them faster accumulation of their business and operational transactions, less, you know, less paper, and easier reconciliation of their data. It's also having an improved UI UX, a more modern user interface for their a better user experience. And then we've also integrated it with Office 365 and for user authentication. Um, and then we, we did go through a, a large quality assurance and user acceptance testing to ensure you know, high quality co code and minimal bugs. So before we get to the answers, I'm going to do the polls. I'm just going to talk real quickly about Synoptic before we get to the question and answers, and then uh, we'll do the polls. So let's do, um, we'll talk about Synoptic first. So Synoptic is a global systems integrator and managed IT service provider that um, helps clients transform their business. We have about 800 plus employees globally across the, the world in many different countries. Uh, we have offerings in the area of uh, managed services, but then specifically we can help clients in their workforce productivity, which is Teams, Office 365, SharePoint. We also do product development services, which is where application development lies or application modernization, which includes uh, coding, testing, development, consulting, uh, DevOps, et cetera, and also mo mobility and IoT. We also have cybersecurity offerings, infrastructure performance, cloud advancements, data insights, which is also can be referenced as business intelligence. Uh, we do a lot of uh, data warehouses, uh, helping our clients understand their data and understand their KPIs in a much more flexible, faster way in a shorter amount of time because uh, the data, uh, moving the data can be automated. And then we also do business applications, which includes our third party uh, applications, which is Microsoft Dynamics, Microsoft CRM, uh, NetSuite, and a variety of other third-party applications. We do implementations around that. So specifically with product development services, our capabilities, uh, we have the full set of uh, product development services or application development services, and the, we have you, user interface and user experience design and development services. We do custom software development services in many different technologies. We have set up many different DevOps, CICD pipelines, quality assurance services around the testing, uh, security performance and func functional testing and automated testing. Then we also do application support and maintenance services and mobility and IoT services. And then as we talked about today, we do also uh, help companies uh, do their mo application modernization and move them through the framework. So I think with that, um, there were some polls that were um, were um, were sent out, and I am going to read them. So the first one was, 
uh, how do you handle end user objections who want to use some legacy tools, but the company wants to modernize the back end infrastructure? Oh, I think those are questions. Those are not the poll questions. So let me uh, let me uh, go back to the poll questions and then I will get back to the, the questions. So let's see here. Oh, so we haven't started the poll questions. So let me go back and we'll start with the question and answer sessions, which I just read. So how do he, how do you handle end user objections who want where who want to use some legacy tools, but the company wants to modernize the back end infrastructure? So I will answer this and then I will have one of my colleagues answer as well. I think the way you handle end user objection, objections in my experience is that you bring them along the process from business case, uh, understanding the reasoning behind the reason that you're moving to the modernization and they understand the pros and cons, the benefits, the costs, and um, kind of the transformation that you're trying to do. So that is, uh, I think when people are not part of the process and the decision, it's harder for sometimes for them to accept. So if they're brought along in the process, and uh, see the background, and um, I think that they're more easier able to accept uh, the fact that you know we're we're moving on to a new modern um, set of tools and infrastructure. And Bridge or Nitty, would you like to um, provide any additional answers to that question? Yeah. So just adding to what Debbie mentioned. I think communication is uh, pretty important if it is, you know, the end user who are creating, you know, are raising objections. It is quite important that we communicate that uh, the change that is being designed or done in any product or application is to improve uh, their user experience and by addressing the current pain points and challenges. And the intention is not to create challenges. So, you know, communication would be the key in order to handle any end user objections. Also, one of the uh, other things that we can do is creating some help documentation, training videos around the uh, new platform or the new features or the change that you are bringing along would help them, uh, the end users, realize that it is not as difficult as they think if that is something that is stopping them or you know creating problems for them. All right. Thank you, Bridge. Um, all right, the the other, um, I think we've launched the poll. So out there, there are some questions. And if you'd like to answer those while we're discussing the questions, feel free to go and do that. And then we can talk about how everyone answered them. But right now, while we're waiting for you to answer the polls, we will take the next question, which is, how do we balance investing in modern technologies while maximizing your existing application portfolio investment? All right. So I'll take a uh, bridge or Nitty, would you like to take a stab at this first? Uh, yeah, Debbie, I, I can do that. So yes, uh, you know, of course, if we talk about uh, this is the first, I mean, the, how do we balance investing in modern technologies, right? Uh, while right. maximizing. Okay, yes. So yeah, of course, this is a decision uh, that is always tough to make. However, there are various ways you can evaluate uh, whether the return on investment in modern technologies is more than what you might have to spend to continue supporting your legacy applications. You suppose the technology uh, that you're using now is absolute and you hardly find resources with those skills. And if the application is not able to scale up to meet the growing uh, data transactions and is either creating bad user experience and making you lose customers or prospects, you would certainly want to think as you know, what is more important. That, that's what I want to add, Debbie. All right, thanks, Bridge. I think um, I would like to also add that um, if you break down your um, your technology portfolio and you look at each component um, as to where it is in its its life cycle of um, you know from 
where you might need to sunset things, where you where you don't need to sunset things, where where it's working for you. I think you can evaluate each area as to which you know what works. Sort of, sort of like we've we've done application rationalization, where we look at the applications and how it's supporting the business processes. And if it's no longer supporting the business process, then it might be time to retire that, or you know you might be able to gain some. Uh, benefit by, you know, no longer paying for the license or, you know, maybe using an existing tool for that particular business process, or maybe somebody's not actually using it. We find many organizations don't actually use all the applications that are out there, or a, another uh, application was built or bought, and not all the features and functions are being used in that particular, um, you know, third party or custom app. And so it might be time to retire those. So I think um, in order to really understand your, your, you know, your investment is look at, you know, what's really supporting the, the key business processes, um, what's working for you, right? And how do you extend that to gain more benefits in terms of like cost? And uh, is there any other additions, Bridge or Nitty, that you'd like to? add on that or we'll move on to the next question yeah i think they're both okay all right the next question is how can synoptic support my digital transformation endeavors so synoptic has um, helped many of their clients with uh, digital transformation roadmap and i started to talk about application rationalization so we do have some consulting engagements where we come in and do um, assess the environment of where the current state is, the current state processes, the current, um, you know, what's actually, what, where, what's the state of the infrastructure, what's the state of the uh, applications. And we develop a future state roadmap and a plan to take the customer through the digital transformation journey. So we have an offering where we can do that depending on the size of your organization, you know, from, you know, uh, six to 12 weeks, depending on, you know, again, the size of your organization uh, to, to help you come up with a plan. And then after that, we would help you execute it or at least give you some ideas on where the cost is and where the priorities are for your organization. So are there any other questions? Not right now, but we will go back and I think we got some poll responses. So let me read those. All right, so I think the first question in the poll was, what's the main challenge you are facing in your application modernization journey skills so most people said skills right um so that is um it must be the current current skills that you don't have to be able to move your 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 organization to that new um, application modernization journey so yes that that's very interesting and that's why um uh, you know, Synoptic can help with that. And um, a lot of organizations have to undertake some training of their of their uh, employees um, and engage a vendor with them to help bring the can engage a vendor to bring them up to speed with the skill sets. Yeah, and Any apart other? from yeah, and apart from skills, I think you know cost is also an important factor. And we also try to work on that by automating uh, some of the development processes or probably the discovery phase where we work closely with the client, interacting with them, understanding the business needs, and then you know uh, helping them create a roadmap or strategy to modernize. So as we mentioned in one of the best practices, we have a decoupling approach, which would also help you know uh, our clients rationalize their cost. Yes. All right. And the next poll question is, what's the main challenge you are facing in, uh, wait, yeah, so we have another skills one. What's the main challenge you're facing in your application modernization journey? 
cost 66%, skills 33%. So I think we just answered that. Um, and I think the next question in the poll was, where are you in your application modernization journey? And the response, 100% of you said, not yet started, right? So, um, and addressing where to get started would be a good idea. Yep, that's the answer to that question. Well, um, we look forward to helping you if you need some help in getting started. And um, Synoptic, um, you can contact us. Uh, I'm Debbie Zelton at, you know, dzelton at synoptic.com. And we can help you uh, through your digital transformation journey, as well as your application, and specifically, more specifically, with your application modernization journey. Uh, we have multiple different services, and we look we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for attending this webinar, and have a really great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.